What's up YouTube, it's the one and only legend of winning, aka Low, and I am back with another video. Now as we all know, the NBA season is coming to a conclusion, so what I decided to do was give you all a set of videos, wrapping up, and giving my own perspective of the NBA season. To make sure you're updated on all the videos that I upload about the NBA season in the next upcoming days to a week, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you can be alerted when I upload a video on the channel. Now as we all know, because of the NBA season's coming to a conclusion, the big talk in the community has been who will win the MVP award between Russell Westbrook and James Harden. However, as entertaining as that is, I do want to shed light on another race that is going on in the NBA this year, which is the All-NBA Teams. The All-NBA Teams, in my opinion, is an award that should be valued higher than the MVP. When it comes to the MVP, there's too many politics and too many restrictions that come into play when it comes to, to deciding who will win that award. However, the All-NBA Team is the greatest 15 players in their set positions in that set year and is fairly cut and dry. However, over the past couple of seasons, it's been extremely interesting on who does and does not make the All-NBA Teams. With the depth in the guard and four positions in the NBA becoming much more significant, there has been a lot of players over the past couple seasons being left off these lists. And the same will be said about this season as well. But there is a twist this year that could alter multiple players when it comes to the financial end. For people out there who are unaware, in the new CBA, it gives a financial incentive for the players to perform at an All-NBA level, which again, in my opinion, is much more interesting. When it comes to the MVP, you might have one or two snubs. However, when it comes into this All-NBA team, there's going to be a lot of people who might not make it. So first, let's talk about the guards. Now, as we all know, when it comes to guards, there are two guards in each All-NBA team, and there are three All-NBA teams, which means that there are six opportunities for a guard to be selected or named at an All-NBA level. However, this number immediately gets cut into half. With the performance of Stephen Curry, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden consistently being played at an elite level, for the next couple of years, this is going to be a very consistent theme. So now because of the elite level play between those three players, six has now turned into just three opportunities. And again, like I said before, it's extremely interesting to see not only who makes it, but who doesn't make it. And what's even more interesting is the players who won't even receive consideration. Players such as Kemba Walker, CJ McCollum, Bradley Bill, who are all having fantastic years, actually career seasons, they might not even receive any consideration whatsoever. For furthermore, you have players such as Damian Lillard and maybe even Klay Thompson, players who made it before, but because they necessarily don't fit the narrative of what's happening this year, they may not receive consideration whatsoever neither. And also you have older players such as Kyle Lowry and Chris Paul, who obviously have massive effects in their teams winning or losing games. However, due to the numbers not being ridiculously inflated, they probably will not receive consideration either. However, that still leaves four players in my mind that still have a chance to be an All-NBA player, but still, like I said before, there's only three other slots. First, you have Kyrie Irving. Good! Kyrie Irving with 3.4 remaining! Then you have Isaiah Thomas. Three. DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan sees an opening, drives and throws oh. it down! DeMar DeRozan with the slam! And of course, John Wall. To 70, Wall, oh! John Wall going hard to the hole! All four players have a very legitimate argument to why they should be in the All-NBA teams. Personally, I believe Isaiah Thomas is an obvious selection. His play this season has been stellar, having a career year and leading the Boston Celtics to what seems to be the first seed in the Eastern Conference. And then after that, in my opinion, you have DeMar DeRozan, who again is having a stellar season, putting up ridiculous scoring numbers and leading his team to victories even though his running mate in the backcourt Kyle Lowry has missed a significant amount of games towards the latter part of the season. But then finally, that leaves us with Kyrie Irving and John Wall. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know my sentiment when it comes to John Wall. I love his play, and I do recognize he has been fantastic this season, leading his Washington Wizards to potentially 50 wins. 
And on the other hand, you have Kyrie Irving. And even though I don't talk about Kyrie Irving enough on this channel, he's having a fantastic season as well. A player who is still putting up fantastic numbers, his efficiency has gone up as well. However, due to his lack of defensive presence, a lot of people just don't see him as an elite guard. Which also still brings me to the point of where does Kyrie Irving stand in the NBA? I consistently see a lot of people put ridiculous claims that he is the third best point guard in the NBA. However, after looking at this list and looking at who potentially could or could not make the all NBA team, you can make a very legitimate argument that Kyrie Irving isn't even a top five point guard in the NBA, which again might be concerning to some people, but to others, it might not be news whatsoever. However, if I had to make a decision between those two players, I would obviously select John Wall, which means that even though Kyrie Irving is having a fantastic season this year, he is not going to be on the all NBA team. Now when it comes to the forwards, just like the guards, you have two forwards on each team, three teams, so that means there's six opportunities for a forward to be selected in the All-NBA team. However, there is some bad news for some upcoming forwards in the NBA. Extremely similar to the guards, there are four forwards that are already making up the All-NBA team for years and years to come. You have Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, which means that there are only two opportunities left for a forward to be selected into the All-NBA team. And with that being said, let's just take one away because Giannis Antetokounmpo is obviously going to make one of the selections, which then leaves only one left. And you have players such as Gordon Hayward. It was back as a oh, oh, hey. oh, Hayward. That's what I'm talking about right there. Gordon That's Hayward. What I am talk Paul George. Robinson. Lobs it up and Paul throws it down. And Jimmy Butler. Butler wheeling, step back, fires. Oh, let me step back and oh, kiss myself. My oh, again. Now, over the past couple weeks to a month, Paul George has been phenomenal, lighting it up and consistently carrying his organization, his franchise, and the roster that has had some problems with winning games. Then you have Jimmy Butler who's had some problems with his teammates. However, they have still stayed afloat and may actually finish the season with a record of 41 and 41. And then finally, you have Gordon Hayward. Now, Gordon Hayward, as we all know, he's not the same defensive presence as a Paul George or Jimmy Butler. However, if you look at their numbers just on the surface, Gordon Hayward's numbers actually stack up and compare extremely well when it comes to Paul George. But the thing that really separates Gordon Hayward from both of those players is the fact that he's on a team that is winning a lot of people don't recognize this but they do indeed reward winning quite consistently when it comes to these awards last year despite putting lesser numbers than demarcus cousins deandre jordan was actually listed as the all nba first team center so i could actually see gordon hayward getting a nod over paul george or jimmy butler the reason why this is such a big story is because if paul george or gordon hayward for that matter receives the all nba nod then that does mean that they both are eligible to receive the 70 million dollar bonus that no other team can give them if they do decide to stay on their franchise and this is something that the indiana pacers are really hoping for because they took a massive risk at the end of the trading deadline by not giving away paul george to the boston celtics for whatever they were offering up for him so if paul george doesn't make the all nba team which if i had to choose right now i honestly don't believe he will that means that there is no 70 million dollar incentive for him to stay on the indiana pacers which then means that he's more likely going to leave the organization and play for someone else which is a massive loss for the Indiana Pacers. And finally, we have these sensors. Now there's one center on each team, there's three teams, so obviously there's three opportunities. And to make things even easier, when it comes to the Eastern Conference, there really isn't any big men whatsoever outside of Hassan Whiteside. And the Miami Heat, as it stands right now, seems like they might not make the playoffs so because of that, I really don't believe Hassan Whiteside will be selected for an NBA team. However, when it comes to the Western Conference, there are a bunch of big men who have a very legitimate reason and argument to why they should be selected to an NBA team. And basically, it's been set up to two different groups. On one hand, you have DeMarcus Cousins, Carly Towns, and Jokic. Three big men who are putting up ridiculous stat lines. 
However, it doesn't really translate into wins. A lot of people will make the argument that it's not their fault that their teams aren't successful. However, like I said before, when it comes to DeAndre Jordan last year being the first team on NBA center, when it comes to these end of the season awards, they do reward players who are on teams who win games. And on the other hand, that's exactly what you have. Marcus Saul, Rudy Gobert, and DeAndre Jordan. Players who don't really put up ridiculous numbers. However, it's extremely obvious that their influence in the game does allow their team to win more than they probably should, especially when it comes to Rudy Gobert. If they don't reward Gordon Hayward, I do believe that they're actually going to give a nod to Rudy Gobert, and I wouldn't be surprised if Rudy Gobert was the first team all NBA center this year. But also, it does bring into the fact that Marcus Saul is having a fantastic season as well, and DeAndre Jordan is basically putting up the exact same numbers he was posting up last year. What I want you to do in the comment section below is leave your own opinion on who should make the all NBA team and who shouldn't make the all NBA team. Also, make sure, like I said before, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and make sure you hit the like on the video if you enjoyed it. And with all that being said, oh yeah, follow me on Twitter. I don't say that enough. And with all that being said, I will see you all later. Peace.